the Denver Broncos were just proven right again. And if I'm starting to sound like a broken record, just pop the DVD out of the DVD player, blow the dust off, just just wipe it off and, and put it back in. It'll be fine. Actually, don't do that because the Denver Broncos are right is just a phrase you're going to have to get used to because I... Everyone in NFL media is going to be saying that come December when the Denver Broncos are vying for a playoff spot when they truly picked us to win five games at max. And we're just seeing another major source come out and talk about how right the Broncos were with moving on from Russell Wilson. Uh, And we're going to go over that here in one second. So uh, last week or two weeks ago, we went through all of the really like patriarchs of the game who've gushed about Sean Payton so that it wouldn't just be me saying that we have an elite coach. You're hearing it from other people who have no reason to say good things about him, starting with his mentor, Bill Parcells, who said he's one of the most innovative minds in the game and that his offensive strategy is unparalleled to Dick Vermeil saying that Andy Reid and Sean Payton are the best offensive coaches of a decade uh, to looking at his former players. We know everyone from New Orleans is flocking to continue coaching with him. And we, we've just seen time and time again, these old school dudes say Sean Payton is super, super good. Yet, we know the media and the story and all of that due to laziness, due to not liking Sean Payton, have been throwing him under the bus mainly for the moving on from Russell Wilson and the dog chewing him out on the sideline of the Detroit Lions game. And what a lot of people were saying is that, like, hey, if he really was the offensive coach of the decade or if he really was an unparalleled mind like these guys are saying, what a good coach can do is a good coach can put anyone in their system and fit their system to match the skill that they have. Like that's what a good leader does. That's what I hope to be doing better every day. And my actual job is getting the most out of the talent that I have on my team. Uh, but, but they've said like Sean Payton couldn't do that with Russell Wilson, but we know he could, and we know he did. And we know that the offense that Sean Payton and Russell Wilson ran was so different than the offense that Sean Payton ran when he was in New Orleans. He even came out in the offseason and said, like, hey, I could only put my guardrails on top of this offense. That's all we got installed. And now we are seeing from a very definitive, reputable source that that indeed is the case. And the crazy thing about this is this is an article that is airing on, uh, not airing, I guess it's not on TV, but is appearing on a Steeler Nation page. And we're just seeing the, the panic already start to set in. Uh, my son and I got to go to Pro Football Hall of Fame two week, last week, and it was amazing. And I saw so many Steelers fans in Troy Polamalu jerseys and stuff like that. And I would go up to all of them and be like, hey, how are you feeling about Russ? And all of them were like, ah, I think it's actually going to be Justin Fields. We No one in, in Pittsburgh actually thinks that um, Russell Wilson is the answer. Well, Mark Schlereth hopped on a podcast, and then that was aggregated and put into – uh, this article on the Steelers, the Steelers blog, which just sounded the alarms about like how hard this could be for the Steelers with Russell Wilson. And one of the things that Schlereth talks about is that he ran into um, Drew Brees at the Super Bowl. And this is the part that is just like shows me that Sean Payton was right. And, and Sean Payton is an elite coach like Dick Vermeil said about him. And Drew Brees allegedly told Mark Schlereth that he couldn't even recognize the offense that the Denver Broncos were running. Basically saying that like Sean Payton did totally change what he wanted to do to fit Russ and then ultimately figured out, hey, I can't make this work. Like I was able to uh, get the most out of this that I could, but you, you can't, you know, get more out of it. They, he milked all the milk out of the Russell Wilson cow that he could. And it was three wins better than Nathaniel Hackett got out of Russell Wilson. It had us in playoff contention all the way up until the nightmare before Christmas Eve. Right. And, and we know that Sean Payton is elite. And we're now seeing that Drew Brees and Mark Schlereth are confirming that Sean Payton did adapt his system to fit Russ and it didn't work. And so we moved on. Uh, And now even just seeing that this Steelers blog is sounding the alarm and saying, hey, this could be a a really bad thing, which is why it's good. We've got multiple cracks at this right here with Justin Fields. And there are a ton of rumors on uh, Steelers Reddit that the Steelers are going to be gunning for Dak Prescott next year. And, And so the Denver Broncos were right to pass on Justin Fields and get... Pat Sertan a couple of years ago, I remember when every everyone on 104.3, the fan was like, oh, that was really foolish. The Broncos should have gotten the a quarterback. They don't have a quarterback. And 
that was a big swing to get Pat Sertan. And now his peers are even saying he's the best cornerback in the league. So the, the Denver Broncos were right to pick Sertan over Fields. And Sean Payton was right to move on from Russell Wilson because now we are going to be able to run the offense that Drew Brees ran uh, with Sean Payton. So very interesting th- thing there to see. Um, a couple other things that I just thought were super interesting here news-wise as, as we finish out this here is uh, looking here at the toughest divisions in football, looking here that the AFC West that we're in is the fourth best division in football. And uh, that's kind of like that it's good that we're not the first but the the tough part of our schedule this year is that we do have to play the best division in football the encouraging thing is like hey we beat cleveland last year when we weren't that good uh and looking at the division right under us we swept all of these teams except for losing that crazy inexplicable game with all the patriots backups and then i mean we swept the nfc north minus the detroit lions and so the denver broncos are going to be much better uh than the national pundits are saying it and time and time again i'm just seeing where sean payton and the denver broncos have been right and there are some massive gambles that we're taking this year and if those gambles don't pan out i will be the first to come out and tell you when we're wrong uh there you know people say like i'm too much of a homer if our center does not step up and fill in for what we had, you know, in, in losing Cushionberry. I'll be the first person to say we should have signed one of those free agent centers that's floating around out there. There's a guy who played for Dallas for a while out, out there. Uh, if Lucas Kroll or Dulcich doesn't get healthy and we whiff and we don't have a tight end and we have the worst tight end room in the league again, I'll be the first to come out and say that he was wrong on that as well. But Sean Payton is constantly – since he has been here in these two years, he has been proven right time and time again. So next big thing I'm wondering about, is he going to continue to make right picks is we have a long history with the Denver Broncos of having uh, undrafted free agents make the team and not just make the team, but push us way further than we should. Our no fly zone, Chris Harris, Rod Smith, even last year, Jaleel time and time again, we have undrafted rookies who take the league by storm. And so this article here, uh, on nine news goes down and breaks down who are some of the undrafted free agents who might make the 53 man roster. And the dude I think is skyrocketing up boards and would be really cool is Blake Watson from Memphis. And the hard thing with that is the Broncos typically only carry three running backs and we probably have like four good running backs. And so to then add a fifth to the mix, it's like, how's that going to work? And knowing how high, and how much guaranteed money we gave him just to come in and compete. My guess is that if we waive Blake Watson, he will not make it to our practice squad. Somebody like the Dallas Cowboys might scoop him up right away. Uh, but looking at Blake Watson out of Memphis, there are people saying that he was the best pass catching running back in the entire draft period, and he didn't go drafted. Uh, he has a 135 inch broad jump, like a standing broad jump. I honestly don't even think I could triple jump 135 inches. And this dude is like straight up nasty. Um, his speed, his athleticism and his ability to catch passes. I think Sean Payton would make incredible use out of him. And so to have like him and Jaleel as our speed guys, and then you got Javante and Audric as kind of the, the hammer, but then we know P Ryan was just, there's him catching out of the backfield right there. We know P Ryan was like a, safety release valve there for Russ last year and, and caught the ball really well, but just his ability to make people miss in the hole outside of the hole. And then obviously his ability to uh, just catch the ball. This could be an insane value to have this as our undrafted guy. And so just looking at him there, catching this little screen pass going in, out, cut, cutting outside, cutting inside. You just see some nastiness there. And I think running back is the position where it's easiest to evaluate because it's, it's, uh, you know, it is the speed and athleticism there and is the vision there to see the hole and hit the hole. I think, I think, I think, uh, we could really see Blake Watson make this 53 man roster, but the question would be who doesn't make it then when, when we have so many others as well, but very excited about that. Uh, very excited to see Sean Payton proved right again. Either way, we got training camp just around the corner, nine weeks from right now. We will all be reacting to the Denver Broncos beating the Seattle Seahawks in Seattle week one. And I can't wait. Football can't get here fast enough because we got a ton to believe in.